What up, Internet? It's Truancies, another class skip for all the right reasons. And uh, we're back. We took some time off to figure some things out and get to bask in the glory of the country opening back up. But uh, we're back to business. So thank you guys for uh, sticking around and being patient with me today. I got a big problem. Physically. Lord of the Keys. <laughs> Physically a big problem. <laughs> Lord of the Keys, a man of many talents. <laughs> And every now and then you run into someone who you're you you do the math and you're like, I right, this fool is sicker than me for sure. Uh, <laughs> Eliza. Nah, this no hey, off the rip, no one could be sicker than fucking truancies. The fucking sees anybody that knows this motherfucker knows he's a down ass motherfucker. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Cause I do while I do bask in the glory of, of the attention and people laughing at me or with me. Uh, it is one of those situations where I I, I get that uh, I'm I know that I'm shooting ten for ten out here where people I make people laugh and they know what they know I'm about it, but anyways Cause you're like, genuine because you're genuine. Thank you. You're not you're not you're not because people are weird and people try to be funny and I don't think you try to be funny. You just yeah. you're just genuine. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. dude, I'll, I'll be making myself laugh sometimes though. But for most of the times I'm like I'm gonna put this out and see the reaction. But you see exactly you laugh. making I already fucking know because you, bro. <laughs> I fuck with hey, I fuck with this motherfucker because I I feel like you get me. Yeah. I get you, bro. Yeah, because, thank you. Cause one time, man, you you gave like a perfect like uh, psychological breakdown of me. You were like, yeah, oh, uh, I used to think Kennedy was the uh, that motherfucker, but uh, this motherfucker, this motherfucker's crazy. Yeah, he's just a real life trip. Like you hang out with him, and then you're like, wait, am I fucking high? Am I? Am I just? <laughs> yeah. That's the truth, though. This, but I, I know it sees it's because you. Yeah, bro. It's like the Andy Kaufman shit, bro. You're in a social experiment, dude. <laughs> dude, <laughs> and it feels like that. As we get older, I, 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 I think about how we no longer need drugs to trip out on life. And sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Where you'll look back on, like, the state of the world and where we're at, and you're like, yeah, dude, the last thing I need to do is take another tab. Because the world's already crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but then I'll, I'll meet someone like you, and I'm like, yeah, I don't need drugs to fucking trip out on a, on on life with this fool because you're you're one of a kind you truly are eliza let me give you the proper inter introduction my, 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 i just got eliza guy, man. i got psyched we dude. got eliza with us today yeah, man yeah, no yeah. thank you though uh uh the last time you were you were here on an interview it was in a faction of brother smack which i love and respect what you guys are doing um but now that i got you here on the solo um I'm I'm glad I'm glad you rolled through. So I appreciate you coming through. Yeah, One bro. and two, how has the leading up to this point of this year been been for you? You've been staying busy, I know that. I've You've been, been grinding. Grinding. Putting out projects. Grinding. I I'm like have I I'm thinking like I've been helping out people with some projects. But That's what I mean. You you're yeah, you're yeah, helping. Yeah. yeah. Helping out, but um But yeah, you're staying I'm, focused, I'm you're my staying shit, consistent, my, yeah. Yeah, my shit about to come out probably Sometime at the end of this month or beginning of next month. And it's been in the, in the works for a minute. Yeah, it's been in the works for a minute. We got done. We got done maybe. Uh, we started maybe like last November. Mm. And then um, we got done around like March. We, I mean, uh, like Brown Boys. Yeah, uh, yeah. Me, uh, Brian, and Blue. Mm -hmm. um, shout out. Shout out Gonzo. Shout out. Uh, uh, yeah, Blue Tory. Brian yeah. Gazzo. Uh, Gazzo, yeah. Gazzo and Blue, Blue Tory. The G. Uh, we actually did a lot of it in, well... We started the project in Blue's room. We were always in Blue's room. And then at the top of this year, we got a studio. Um, and uh, the studio's been a game changer, bro, because finally we could fucking stay up. Like, we, we couldn't stay up too late at Blue's just out of respect uh, I, for the past. I, I know that feeling. We talked about it on the last interview where, you know, you were talking about at Stretch's house. Uh, uh, they would let you guys – well, I don't know if you were partaking in it, but Kenny and Stretch were, were working on music and – it's very similar to my boy Wes when we would just make beats and, and, and just bullshit and rap till like four in the morning and his mom would come in and be like, can you guys please turn it down? You know what I mean? Yeah. And we, and we would, but like it is one of those situations. It is a comforting feeling knowing that you got your own space. And I've been to your studio and I got to uh, partake in, the, in watching you guys work a little bit before the summer smackdown. But I want to I walk back to uh, you talked about your origin in the Brother Smack interview, but like, let's refresh it. Like, where do you where where were you born? Where were you raised? Uh, so yeah, so I'm from Baldwin Park, California. BP, I, BP, Bowling. Uh, I, I was 
I was born in West Covina at this place called the Doctor's Hospital. Okay. It's across the street from a Cape Mart, but they, uh, I don't think it's there anymore. And then, uh, yeah, man, home of the in and out uh, They got a Raising Cane's there now. It's fucking and great. And it cracks off on. It huh? cracks off, dude. Yeah. It's ridiculous, <laughs> the... the, the Wait time that people will do for chicken strips and fries, bro. Now, no, no knock to Raisin Cane's. They, that sauce is immaculate. You know it's what I mean? It's because they have a formula, and they stick to it, yeah. and, it and it works, man. You're right. right. It's it's like, it's like In-N-Out. It they, is the In-N-Out of chicken yeah, strips yeah, and fries. Yeah, yeah, straight up. Straight yeah. up. They got the strips. They got the fries. They the got bread. the sauce. No ranch, no barbecue. Don't even ask Don't even ask. Shit. I don't. That whatever they got, whatever <laughs> they got going on in that sauce, it's, it, 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 it's amazing. Hey, this is a true story. I just told the guys yesterday. Um... Blue loves when I say some fat ass shit, and like I feel like I, I like the he says that the fattest shit I've done recently was uh, and hey, and I'm hey, by the way, it's not cool to be fat. I'm definitely working out, <laughs> I'm definitely working out, and I'm trying to get better. I've been losing weight, but yeah, you but know, we're big and beautiful, but we're here, big man. and we're, yeah, we're only, only why you're yeah. here, and that's you know, yeah. it's cool because it's like. You know, I have a fat dar, like how people have gay dars if they're gay or something. Like, I have a fat dar. And I, I could call people fat because I'm fat. That's how it there works. There it is. There <laughs> it is. Hey, la, la. You, have, you have that pass. And But it is one of those situations where we do got to get our health right out here, though. No, fat. You got to advocate for that. A but positive. On, on that same... <laughs> positive on that lifestyle. Same, on that same note, we went to... you got to bask in the glory, we, too. Yeah, we went to Lucille's the other day. And uh, I was sipping, and a piece of my ice fell in the apple butter, and I just, you know, I just scooped some of the butter with the ice, and I ate the ice, and I, I had some buttered ice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is that is absolutely so amazing. fat ass shit. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, because <laughs> um, we're on raising canes, right? Like the other day, I went to raising canes. It was like two nights ago, and um, I think I just. I don't. I I really try not to go a lot, but if I go, I'll go like maybe once a week, and that was mm. I guess my day, right? Like two days ago, and uh, I fucking um, I had this ketchup packet, and they have the ones that you could like dip or or squeeze them, mm. and I ripped off the parts to squeeze it, and then when I and it wasn't coming out, and I was like, damn, I really thought I got it right. So I I had a white shirt, man, from that homie Micah. What's that shit called? The the so sovereign society or whatever. <laughs> I had that dude's shirt on this like on this all white shit, mm. and I just squeezed the fuck out of the ketchup, bro. <laughs> and the whole fucking shit. I don't know why they have so much ketchup in those packets. Like the whole shit, bro. All this, all my white sheets, all ah. my pants, bro. All my fucking Air Force ones, like fuck, bro. And I just, I didn't want to like move because I was almost done with my food. So I just finished the food with my ketchup on my body, and then I just, I just took everything off to sleep. <laughs> that is hilarious, man. And that sucks, man. That's what wearing white is a dangerous thing. <laughs> wearing white is a dangerous thing, especially when you're, when you're uh, taking risks oh. like with ketchup and ice cream and shit. Um, but yeah, dude. Shout out to being big and beautiful. Uh, <laughs> yeah, dude. So, uh, Bowen Park. Uh, you're still out there? Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm. Uh, we stay out in uh, that general area, not, yeah, not yeah. in BP. I've been, no your, more. I've been to your crib. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very hospitable. Your family's very welcoming, for sure. It yeah, was a bro. good time. Oh yeah, you went for karaoke for my mom's karaoke, birthday. and then also there was a fight happening that night too. Oh yeah, yeah, that was cool. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> do you remember that night, bro? C's went to a, a karaoke night at my family's house. And C's never once sang a song, but everybody's song he did ad libs for. He oh, did yep. he did ad libs and sang over everybody's song. Yeah. He never did a song, but he was featured on every track. <laughs> That's what I do though. That's what I do. Shout out to I Need a Girl Part Two. That one's way better than number one. Oh, yeah, and someone yeah, did yeah. it. Someone did it that mm -hmm. night. It's a great song. But um so Baldwin Park, born and raised, and then uh how did you how did you get into music? Was this in your blood? Was your family playing like uh you know, you come from, are you, you Mexican? Yeah, we're Mexican. Yeah, my, my, my full blood, full blood in Mex. Well, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm. Uh, I was born here, but yeah, my mom is from Jalisco and my dad is from Sinaloa. Oh, I, I know, I know, you're an American. Yeah, uh, yeah, American born. But I'm saying it's like, uh, I didn't know if you were mixed with like Salvadorian or. Oh no, no, yeah. Yeah. Right. My my dad's from Sinaloa and uh, yeah, my mom's from Jalisco. Cool. Yeah, and I definitely grew up on uh, banda and norteño and. Uh, I've, I've been playing accordion since I was like five. Uh, yeah, you talked about that last time. Yeah, but so. I stopped. I, I I eventually stopped because I got into um, uh, keyboard and piano and stuff. Yeah, you know? is the is there a similar uh, like math process to the accordion and keys? Yeah, because I played the 
I played the piano one. Okay, yeah, yeah. The teclado, you okay, know? Okay, for sure, so for the, sure. It's, the, it's like the piano key, you know? Oh, yeah. Yep. And so it was, so when I got on a, a keyboard, I was just like, oh, yeah. You already now, knew. Now I can use both of my hands. Because <laughs> I can only use my right before, right? Like, yeah, oh, yeah, I can yeah. use two, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that was that was sick, dude. So accordion was like the first instrument that you were like, this is, this, this is what I do. Yeah, yeah. Like, was, I remember just playing, and I remember just sitting on my porch every single day um, and just playing the same like hot cross buns ass songs like some simple ass shit you know yeah and my my neighbor fucking um shout out my homie ruben and and it's so fucking i'm i'm boiling up guys if i'm fucking sweating get the man to tell no 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 don't even cheer don't all right cool uh but um uh, the homie ruben who's my neighbor his mom uh she always used to come out and be like oh like my my favorite musician my there favorite you musician, go like uh, play me another song. Play me another song. Yeah, and yeah. She like for sure knew that I only knew like three songs, <laughs> but she was you know she was cool as fuck. Yeah, she yeah, and she yeah. was supportive, and you and you. So you had that charm since the jump. Yeah. You know you were well you, not charm, but I guess that uh, I loved. Just I just loved it. But that's a form of charming people, dog. Yeah, it's entertaining yeah. them. You know what I mean? Uh, and music is one of, if not the greatest entertainment source, in my opinion. Uh, whether you're listening to it or playing it, <laughs> there you go. And um, so five years old, dude, with, with the accordion. And then there you go. There you go. Yeah, boy. Hell yeah, looking militant. But um, uh, so so then from there at five, the accordion, and then uh, you jumped on the keys. When did you when did you jump? When did when did you do the jump from key, uh, accordion to keys? Uh. I don't even remember, dude. I think I think for like my seventh birthday or something, like my seventh or eighth. So not a couple years after. Yeah, I think for like my seventh or eighth birthday, or my, no, maybe even later, like right before junior high. Like, um, my mom uh, got me this keyboard for my birthday. Uh, -huh. uh it was a Casio. Okay. And it had the light up keys. The um, where when you play it, it you know, it just light, it lights up red. Uh huh. And then that's how I learned to to start playing keyboard because I learned like Moonlight Sonata and like Fur Elise and mm -hmm. all these songs. It's uh, classical. Yeah, but like all, all classical and like different shit. Like I remember learning some Elton John one. Uh, mm. What's the one that I remember learning? Benny and the Jets or something? No, no. I wasn't Elton John, or, or maybe it was. Can you feel? Oh yeah, the yeah. Love Lion King. Yeah, yeah. You know? played that on keys. Yeah, cause I, cause that was like one of the first songs on the fucking list, right? Like to learn. Um, yeah, man, it was cool. That's how I learned, and then eventually my uncle. I have a metalhead uncle named Pedro, and. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's remember how I told you I like I grew up children on metal and shit, you know? Yeah. That's how I started learning about Children of Bodom and then just like um Johnny Warman who plays keys and then I would, thought it was so sick because Johnny Warman plays with the fucking keys uh slanted forward, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And he'd just be like standing with his long ass hair. So I was a kid, I was like, he's the fucking yep. best keyboard player of all time. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? That's hard. But yeah. yeah, um I learned all that shit and uh that's that's fast forward to now, dude. The whole the whole time throughout that I was doing drum line shit. I yeah. was like, uh, so I was you in could drum play, line. you could play a little, you could play on the drums too. You get down yeah, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then in college, I was like, uh, studying like uh, drum set, and uh, I got into a car accident and I fucked up my legs. So I was just playing piano in the practice room, like what I had been teaching myself. And my teacher uh, Jeff Elwood at Mount Sac, he heard me and he was just like, "Hey, I heard you playing piano in the practice room. You're not gonna play drums anymore. You're gonna play piano." For I love now. that story. Yeah, and then he just uh, started teaching me and stuff. Yeah, you know what I mean, and yeah. and from there you just went in full. full yeah, I was like full time 20. keyboardist. Yeah, like twenty or something like that. Dope, dope. I'm like twenty seven now, so that's seven years of just going hard on the putting the keys. in work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then uh, so from there, at, so you obviously went to school for music, and then you kind of just did you just figure out like I'm just gonna try to be a full time musician in this. Yeah, I dropped out. Yeah, I yeah. dropped out. So like, <laughs> I was, I was, uh, I was in school and I wasn't doing too hot. Like the only things that I ever did good in was the things I wanted to do. Yeah, music, right? Like everything else. And I'm, I've always done good with um, the actual curriculum. Like I aced all my tests and I would always score the highest on Wooty Woo, whatever. I, I was usually pretty good at English. That was my shit, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. English and math, but uh, I just, I just never showed up. You know, I never showed up. That's honestly what I. Ne that was honestly my biggest flaws. I just. Didn't show up and I didn't do the work, yeah. which is the two main <laughs> things <laughs> to being in fucking school. <laughs> but see that most, so, yeah. most sick ass fools they they learn that the operation in, in which college, the the road that it that it designates you for is like you really have to be about 
working for someone else. Yeah. You get what I mean? I, I, can, I can pinpoint the one quote uh, that honestly probably, like, shifted a lot of what happened in my life because my my piano instructor, Matt Politano, uh, he told me one day in a practice room, bro, it was right towards the end of when I was about to, like, kind of take off and do my own thing. Like, he told me, you know, I think that now you have all the tools to teach yourself and just get better over time, you know? Like, they've taught me they've taught me all the lessons. It's like they've given you a roadmap. Mm-hmm. Now you got to follow that roadmap on your own. That's mm-hmm. a lifelong journey, man. Like, getting better with your technique and your, just your theory. Like, it, it just goes forever until forever, you know, right? And, um, but he's like, I think that we've given you the tools to get better. I think that you would be ready to do it on your own if you wanted to. You just, just remember in the, in the real world, if there's a gig for piano and it's you versus me, who do you think is going to get that gig? That's what he told me, right? Yo, there you go. You know? Yeah. Like telling me that, you know, he obviously plays piano better than me, so it's a cutthroat world out there. Mm. But I'm going to let you know right now, Matt Politano, you can't make a beat like me and you can't rap like me, big dog. There you go. <laughs> and those are facts. <laughs> <laughs> Those are facts. That's a student talking to the teacher right there who mm. now be- has become the master. But do you still keep in contact with, with that guy yeah, at all? Yeah, he's, he's, he's the best, man. He's yeah, you best. still have a good uh, Matt Politano is with him? a fucking G, bro. Hell all, yeah. all the people from outside, they're amazing, So bro. he sees you shining. Uh, ho- uh, I don't know. Hopefully, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if he follows me. I don't okay. follow him. He loves. For sure. Uh, but, uh, but I was saying, like, like uh, you, you haven't – Came in contact with him since college? Uh, I, like, comment on his stuff from time to time. Like, okay. I definitely say what's up. Uh, also, the, my drum instructor from uh, college, Andy Sinisi, too, he was a real one, always just, like, encouraging me, like, dude, you got this ombre. Yeah. yeah, man, like, you got you got this, bro. Like, you know? Yeah, they saw they saw the talent in you from, from the jump. They see what we see you doing out here. You know what I mean? And that's cool that they gave you that they gave you the tools, and you're like, "Fuck this! I'm gonna I'm gonna figure it out on my own." Yeah, and you've been yeah. Putting in work and make and people that matter in this music shit, in my opinion, know about you. You know what I mean? And you're constantly surrounding yourself with people that I can only imagine make are making you be, a better musician. For sure. You know. For sure. That's the name of the game, dude. You got you got to definitely surround yourself with people that make you better. Yeah. And uh, yeah, man, it's. I was just telling the homie driving over here, uh, I've been tripping the fuck out sometimes, man. Like, these past couple shows we've done, like, Fight Club was a shit. Shout yeah. out Fight Club. That's uh, Shout out Fight Club. In, in Long Beach. Um, all the homies from Long Beach. It's just, like, I don't even know how this thing came about, I guess. Like, um, I just used to go out to Long Beach at Rock Sands and, and, uh, and see people and then go to other jams and stuff. And uh, eventually, I just started making homies out there and... Um, I fucking love it out there, dude. Like, I want to move out there. You know? yeah. I love, I love LA, and uh, LA will always be, uh, you know, where it's at for me in my heart, and obviously Baldwin Park. But, but I want to move to Long Beach because I just feel like it's, it's a, it's this fucking sick vibe, man. And, and, and people, I feel like people just, you know, this whole culture, this whole vibe that we fuck with. Like, I just feel like people out there just get it so mm-hmm. hard. You yeah. know what I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah they're yeah. and they're very in tune with, and very respectful to. Uh, one, the art of whatever genre you're making and everyone knows what's good out there in the sense of like people are in- interconnected. We talked about how Nate from Shababa and Kelsey, like those guys live in Long Beach, but like they, they operate in two different worlds, but they're very authentic with those their, guys are their music. You know what I mean? Yeah. And what they put out into the world. So I want to take it back a little bit, though. Backtrack to where we were talking about your boom bap days when you were uh-huh. redeemed dog like what it was that in college too or what where'd that that, that was in college <laughs> yeah and what were you listening to was redeemed, it like him dude <laughs> uh immortal technique people under the stairs like even uh, crazier I, Del- that was that, that was like young that was like young me like immortal technique people under the stairs Del- yeah Del the funky homo sapien all those yeah. people that was that was like younger me i think when i was like 19 uh 18 19 by the time um i was just big on like the the I guess the goats right like fucking Jay Dilla and MF Doom, yeah. and Pete Rock, CL Smooth and uh, fucking. And it's funny because if you're not those fools, they inspired a lot of fools to want to rap like that. And it's just funny to see like the lyrical mastermind want to be fools when they rap, you know? Yeah, it's yeah. Like, it brings out a very pretentious type of rapper. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I, I I mean, dude, those guys 
were the best at or Mad Lib too. Like, damn, dude, I, there's so many people I'm leaving out that list that I'll, I'll be disappointed on myself after this interview for sure. But, <laughs> no, but I get what you're saying. But and yeah, I'm not... it's just that that school, right? That school of of hip hop and and um, you know, I, I fucking grew up on like the the Big L seven minute freestyle. Oh type hell shit, like, all yeah, that shit. I was like, just bumping that the other day here. Still mind blown by it. Yeah, that shit is gas. Yeah. So all all that you know, and just being obsessed with like finding. Uh, when I was first putting stuff up on SoundCloud, I was I was finding like type beats, like uh, serious rapper type beat, <laughs> like you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, melancholy instrumental type beat, like you know. So, yeah, I, I know exactly. We all went through that phase, and I think it's funny though. You were you were rapping too, no? Yeah, yeah, but and and I never really got into like the whole backpacking aspect of it, but I was definitely around a lot of people that were. They were like want to be rappers, you know what I mean? You know what's crazy too, bro? I never understood the phrase backpack rapper, but I always knew that I was one, and I always knew that I. Oh, they exist. I always knew that I was one because, I guess someone pointed it out to me one time that I just moved like that at the time. Yeah, know, you, you definitely know? redeem you when you say redeem and who you are now. <laughs> I was like, oh, that fool for sure went through a backpack rapper phase. You know nah, what I mean? For sure. And I, it's crazy because bus, bro, man, people, dude, man. I feel so lucky to have the experiences in life that I've had because even from, like, ex-girlfriends and uh, old friends and stuff, like, man, um, I was all up and down throughout my 20s. Like, um, you know, just I was all up and down L.A. and Long Beach, but especially L.A., bro, like, always in fucking downtown, always in South Central, always in Watts, always taking the blue line and the green line up the 105, mm -hmm. the blue line from fucking downtown to South Central, and then the fucking red line through, like, all these fucking lines. I would just be up and down that bitch and on the fucking buses all the time, bro. And what were you doing, catching shows or just wilding out in the Hell streets? Hell nah, simping and fucking just being out here fucking yeah, yeah, moving yeah. around and yeah. not even doing moves at the time, bro, just fucking smoking drugs <laughs> and, and <see> fucking <laughs> doing bullshit, you know what I mean? That's what I mean. Yeah, and yeah. That, that's, where, that's where a lot of that, and like I said, no and complete no disrespect to all of the legends we just uh, named that influenced you, but if you're not them, it, bre it breeded a lot of these, like, wannabe, like, I and I hung out with them. And it was funny to me because they were listening to the rap that I was listening to, like, Pusha T and Kanye at the time. And they're like, this is whack. This ain't even real hip-hop. You know what I mean? Oh, and, yeah. And and that's where the, it, that mindset of, like, a lot of backpack rappers. Old, old head mentality, yeah, right? They, they, and they're even, I, I would, in a lot of ways, they're worse because they hate where the one, where the state of music will always go to, like, the ever-changing trends of it and all that stuff. And they act like it's still the '90s in a sense of like where they're still str they're still struggling and they're talking about like uh you know smoking drugs under a bridge and shit. And it's like, man, you're 30 now. Like, what's, what's wrong with you? Yeah, go what's take wrong? care of your family. Bro. <laughs> go take care of your family. Yeah, and yeah. that's the thing. It's like shout out my backpack rapper homies and all that stuff. But it's it's always funny to me because I went through that phase in my early 20s, like 18, 19, 20 to like 22, and then I realized I was like, oh, this is where you become a bitter ass fool in the streets, like. Life is constantly a struggle for you because you, you're you're not making moves. You know what I mean? In uh, life, to uh, also I don't even think it's an age thing either because I think you could be as old as you want and and make things happen. I think I think people let themselves get defeated by that concept of like, damn, I'm fucking, I'm 33, it's over for me. Like I don't got a shot. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What you mean, bro? Like I don't even, I don't even know how old Benny the Butcher is or these fools, but these fools. Oh yeah, they're in. Fool, like popped off when he was like 38. Exactly. Or fucking, yeah, no, or, they're they're in their mid 30s like right now. Yeah, or 67 <laughs> or however old. He yeah, is. yeah, yeah. And yeah, it, I mean, if but, you look and it look you look at that, and that's very true. A lot of these artists, there's like every now and then, like it, the the young. The the young guys getting money is kind of a new concept in music. You know what I mean? Over the span of time, it was mostly people with already established careers, like Jay Z. Like he didn't become the guy, the the legend that he is now until like in his late thirties. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, maybe even early forties. And it's one of those situations where where uh, you look at these people and. Yeah, it, it could happen at any time. In fact, I'd rather it be a situation like I'm glad that I, I'm living the life that I live right now because if I was living it at 19, like with the money that I'm making right now, I probably would have been dead, dog. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> oh, I would have yeah. just cared about one thing and one thing only, and that's going hard with no consequences. You know what I mean? Yeah, bro. Especially when you're giving bread, yeah. when, you're, when you work hard for your money. But, yeah, so – but I just think it's funny that there's a certain part of, of rap and hip-hop that refuses – 
to grow and it and it and they stay with that old head mentality. You know what that, I mean? That is a good way to put it, man. I, I, my, I don't have no advice for no one. I won't say that, but mm. I just I would encourage people to uh, step out of their comfort zones. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. I, would, I would encourage people to step out of their comfort zones, and um, because I think that music, and this is just definitely a personal opinion, right? But I think that music is it's a fifty fifty thing. Like it should be, I should be making things that make me happy, but I should also be considerate of the person that's consuming. Mm -hmm. The art, the listener, right? Yeah. The listener, right? And I should maybe be thinking about maybe what they want to hear out of me, right? Mm -hmm. Like, this is a conversation after all. It's not like a one thing where I'm just screaming things at you and you're going to hear it or <laughs> yeah. not, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're going to either, you're going to respond to me somehow, right? You're either going to respond with silence or you're going to respond with like a, a vibe or something, yeah. right? Like, I'd rather, I'd rather always have that in mind. And if that means we make a fucking dance song or an indie song or a fucking hip hop one or, a little bit of everything mixed up or whatever the fuck or a Spanish thing or whatever, like just follow the vibe. You know For sure. I mean? And that's the thing. You you have you've lived a very privileged lifestyle in the sense of like you never show you never close yourself in a box when it comes down to the sonics of music. You know what I mean? Like you were open from cumbias to children of Bodom to hip hop, like and you just kept evolving with yeah. Whatever you got into, you know what I mean. Shout and now, out to, shout out to Cumbia, dude. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah, that's been going well lately. And that's the type, Crisol. Yeah, Crisol. We'll, we'll talk about her in a minute. But that is that is a situation where where it's cool that you are an enigma. Like you called me an enigma, but dog, you're you're one too in the sense of you don't box in your sound and what you create. Because if you one day you want to make some like zap funk shit, or one or one you one uh, one night you want to make some really introspective hip hop uh you know ma lyrical mastermind shit or you want to make some just like chill m mellow music you know what i mean yeah, yeah. you know ne you never box yourself in and i respect that about you and everyone that you surround oh, yourself with you, everyone that you surround yourself with going back to it like you really you re you really are surrounded by people that constantly want to move up with the shit that they put out into the world and I think that there is some artists that don't give a fuck about the listener's feelings. And they get away with that shit. I'm good right now. Thank you. Um, they do get away with them being so good that they don't care about making music for others. They make music for themselves. And it just happens to work in their favor where we also like the music that they make for themselves too. You know what I mean? And that's dope. That that's is a, dope. That, that's a process, you know, for sure. And that's why I'm saying it's, it's, a, it's a fine line that I don't like speaking upon too much. But I would just say like... You just got to consider what you're doing it for, right? What you're doing it and who you're doing it for. And if you are doing it for yourself and it happens to work for other people, that's great. But also, you know, if it's been since you were 22 years old and you're however old now and you just been spitting the same underground immortal technique type ass bars yeah. and, and it's just like hasn't been working out, man. Like, and you haven't been making bread off of it and stuff. Yeah. It's like, man, you, you know, take a step back. Ask yourself. What well, what am I doing here? <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Like, no, and a lot of them, and a lot I mean? of, ironically, a lot of these dudes who are smart because they listen to smart music in the genre of hip hop, don't get it that it's like, dog, immortal technique is immortal technique for a reason. You're not and, and, immortal technique. And by technique, the way, dog. I fucking love immortal technique. Of and that's, course. I don't even mean it in a disrespectful way. No, we're not way. disrespecting. But I, we I, use I, him. I, you get what I'm saying? I meant more like the underground. I vibe. get what you're saying, yeah, but because yeah, yeah, like, yeah. we use him as a perfect example as. His fan base and people that are adjacent to that world, like I've come around them and they're dickheads because they're they're constantly like blaming the world for them not being like for the state of music being in a terrible place or for uh, they're blaming the world for their them constantly struggling. It's like, dude, what do you do though? What do you do in in real life? Like you're still underground in the in the under bridges tagging and shit, and then like having to pay tickets because you get caught. And no disrespect to because I got homies that are still living that life. <laughs> but but it's like you make you you shoot yourself in the foot when you do this shit. You know what I mean? Hey man, hey, you know. Shout out to all my graphers and shout out to all my yeah, homies bro. smoking under the bridge. But at the same time, too, it's like I'm talking about the bigger picture of, of where that there's like a very bitter resentment for there's a lot of uh, there's a bitter resentment in that community that kind of that's always irked me because I'm like, dude. You're still 30 and mad at the world, or you're 30 plus mad at the world, and that, that's why I'm. That's why I, I stopped doing shows for a long time, mm. and I just 
started focusing more on the craft because I was sick of the shows when I was doing the Redeem stuff. I was sick of these more hip hop based shows where I feel like everyone's just too school, too cool for school and just standing there like, yeah, you know, and just vibing and just like. And it's kind of crazy though because yeah, if you, you know? if you're if you're bold enough to conversate with those people, you find out that they are down to talk to you and they're really nice. Bro, here's my here's my whole philosophy but they put on up all front. these fucking shows, bro. Here's my philosophy on all the. And by the way, man, I just want to preface all this shit by saying, me, bro. I ain't fucking shit, bro. Yeah. I don't got no album out yet. I'm about to put it out. Y'all can make a decision for yourself on what the fuck I'm talking about. Like, yeah. maybe this motherfucker's crazy, maybe not. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure the homies will all fucking vouch for me. But fucking, all I got to say is, is just, you know, when I used to go to these shows, the one thing I remember thinking to myself, um, I remember thinking to myself, like, you know, man, this is just fucking high school all over again. And... These guys just don't want to show no love, even though if you show love to them, not that it's an exchange where it's like, oh, I showed you, so you got to show me. But it's just more of like, you know, if a motherfucker obviously kills a set and nobody in the fucking crowd shows them love, like, that's a, uh, it's a weird vibe, man. It's a weird vibe, especially when it's all dudes. You know yeah. what I mean? There's yeah. like almost no females there. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. if there are females there, they're all fucking dabbed the fuck out. <laughs> and they're just like with their boyfriend or something, you know? Yeah. And, uh, um. And they're just as wild as the boys. Yeah. I yeah, get what you're saying. No. And, and, and I guess what I'm trying to say is like, all those guys, all they want is love, bro. Mm -hmm. All that they fucking want is just for someone to be like, dog, you're sick as fuck, bro. Like, you got bars, dog. Mm -hmm. Like, you're sick. Like, they want they want for that whole moment where the crowd's just like, hey, yeah. oh, like, oh, who doesn't want that? You feel me? Of like, course. who doesn't want that? Like, that's all they want. So why they got to put up this fucking front and, like, not show love to other motherfuckers? Like, when in reality, all you fucking want is love yourself, bro. Like, yeah. you feel me? Like, I be talking a big game and talking shit, but I, I only talk my shit in the sense of, like, I'm going to talk my shit. Like, I think I'm the greatest at being me. You yeah. feel me? Yeah. I, but I don't think I'm the greatest at being the greatest. You feel yeah, me? Because yeah, yeah. there's so many. Of you feel course, me? of course. But, but um, you got to show love to people. You feel me? You gotta, and you got to show love to people because what do you think is going to happen, man? Like, you you get, you get really do get what you give out. You, you feel me? Know, and that's what you know a lot what I mean? of people, not, and not just, not just to um, poke at hip-hop, because I love that genre so much. Yeah. Right? And I see, I see this in multiple worlds of music like in the hardcore scene does this shit too um the hip-hop scene and like a lot of places you'd be surprised how many people just want love and and you just or just show them respect or give them their props like i've seen so many people with a like a tough guy face on at hardcore shows and i'll go up to them when, when they're they're in a band or they do photography and then i go i, I acknowledge that i know what what they do on like to, for the scene, for the community, yeah. and then they, they like they have a big smile on their face. They give you a hug. They're like, "Oh, what up?" But you would, if I would have never done that, if I would have never extended like give them props, they would have just been like the sitting there, like just like looking like they don't want like any type of friendship. You know, they would have been looking yeah, like a yeah. tough guy. And the same thing goes for for rap. I'm just saying, it's like everyone just wants to be uh, acknowledged for their for their committed work that they do for the community and the music. You know what I mean? Whether mm -hmm. it be photography, whether it be uh, you're in a band or you rap, whatever it is, like you, it, it is impressive on how many people don't want to just express respect for one another. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But I think I think times are changing though. I times, like, I, I was about to say that yeah. times times are changing, and um, actually, I have a a homie named Beardo that. Uh, he does some shows called Black Books and Rhymes. Okay. And I love going to those, man, because I feel like that's a sick ass. That's I've a, heard about that. Yeah. That's a good community vibe, bro. Like I feel like that's that's a good vibe where it doesn't remind me so much of some of these old shows I used to do. Um, they've gotten together more of like a collective vibe of like people that have like you know vendors and show love and support each other and come they come through and and try to uh, support each other's businesses and stuff. You know, mm -hmm. like that shit is dope, man. That shit is dope. Like now it's on the right track, and I think more people are having more of that openness, you know what I mean? Because these situations I'm talking about, they were all when I was like, man, in our early 18, yeah. 19, 20, you feel me? Like Late teens, early 20s. Yeah, yeah, and and it was like... But we're I, also... To, 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 I, it was like 2011, bro, like 20, 2011, 2012 LA hip-hop scene, yeah. you feel me? Like, 
Which but also to a certain extent, shit. I will say this to to uh, maybe throw some type of uh, reasoning in it is when you're young and we're high and we're wilding out living life, like we're maybe still trying to figure out ourselves. And a lot of us are insecure at that moment to like acknowledge that we know that per- like, oh, I see you around. I know what you're doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like kind of get insecure at the fact of like. What if this person just like this is me, and I was just trying to show him love? You know what I mean? Yeah. So there, but now at like you know entering thirty, I'm like I'm, whether the person's a dickhead and 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 is is whack in real life, I still want to let them know that I uh, that I see what they're doing, I respect it because we've lost so many people, and over the time that we're through in music and as homies in in life that are no longer with us here, and it's like they should have they they should have been given more praise while they were here. You know what I mean? Facts. And 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 that's I think that's where I think that's the mode that I choose to operate in is like that's we've seen facts, we've seen we've lost a lot of people that we love and the art that they've put into this world and there's currently artists that we that we love putting out art into this world that I'm gonna make sure they get at least my respect and my props like I'm gonna make sure that I give it to them at all times when I see them you know yeah no, so it I'm, is one of those it I'm is trying one to of those get better things. at that too man like you know even. Yeah, man. I think I'm trying to really get out of that me- mentality of being competitive with people now. Just yeah. in general. In general. I-, I think I'll never lose my competitive nature. No, think- competitive nature is needed out here. Yeah, and I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm the oldest brother and my, my, my younger brothers like I feel like we always grew up fighting and shit. Like I feel like we always just had that competition within us. So that's always been so so ingrained in us. But um you know, I'm trying to really get away from that toxic side of the com- competitiveness because um, it is nice to, like, feel like you make amends with people that maybe you didn't think you would be cool with or you're like, you know, like, I think in when you're involved in scenes and stuff, sometimes it's easy to misinterpret things or misread things yeah, and, yeah, that's... And, and be thinking, like, oh, this guy doesn't fuck with me or this guy thinks I don't fuck with him or mm-hmm. there's this weird vibe or, like, oh, this oh, I didn't go to this person's show or they didn't go to my show, so it's a fucking problem now or like, or whatever the fuck. And I know that sounds so stupid. And but so, artists are that sensitive sometimes, It sounds sometimes, so dog. stupid. It sounds so small, so petty. But artists are that sensitive. And uh, not even just artists, people, right? People, yeah, people yeah. People just notice things, right? Like, and, mm. and um, so, you know, I'm really trying to get away from that mentality and trying to make amends, like I said, and just be cool with, whoever I can possibly be cool mm-hmm. with. And not taking me? everything so personal. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I don't want to name people, but I just, you know, if you feel like I, if you feel that type of way, man, hey, I don't feel that way about nobody. I yeah. love you. Holler at L's, though. Um, but it is, it is one of those things where, where uh, yeah, it's just, I think, and I'm going to give the world of music the benefit of the doubt. I've been going to shows since it's opened up, and you know, you guys just did Summer Smackdown or Brother, oh yeah, Summer Smackdown, and that shit was beautiful. Like everyone was giving love to each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that was crazy because it it, re- it put a, a little fire under my ass to do this shit again because so many girls that I'd never met were like, "Hey, you do the interviews with Spencer? Or you did you interviewed Brother Smack and all this shit? Like I remember you. I like your voice, blah blah." blah. And I was like, and dudes too were saying, <laughs> were giving me he said, props. He said, I was like. And I was like, oh, and I was like, oh, I got no. But it, regardless of that, it did make me feel good. But it, it brought back what I needed to prioritize. You know what I mean? Yeah. And lit a little fire under my ass where I was like, all right, good. Like, people seem to love it out here. People seem to love what we got going on. And yeah, it it, it felt good. My mom recognizes you. Like my sisters know you. There. Yeah, I said, what oh, up to yeah. your mom? Selling like, merch. Oh yeah, that's the guy from the interview. Yeah, yeah I said, yeah, what up? Yeah. I bought I bought um two tees, two uh, brother smack tees, and I said, what up to your mom? She was uh, working the merch and shit. Sick, so sick. Yeah. But yeah, so let's 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 dive out of the emotional shit and into uh, what you've been doing, the work you've been putting out. Uh, you guys just did uh, the Brother Smack Summer Smackdown event, mm-hmm. sold out event. It was cracking. Shout out to, that place shout was out hot box of shit. Yeah. I didn't felt I didn't been to a hot box event like that since going. Ironically, going back to the boom bap shit we were just talking about. Oh yeah, where I was like, damn, I need to step outside for a minute, dog. Like <laughs> I just keep breathing in weed smoke and. <laughs> I only hit the blunt a couple times, and I felt I got more high just by breathing air there. You know what I mean? Yeah. But um, it was a beautiful event none, nonetheless, um, and people showed up, and you guys got it cracking. So um, I'm going to give you props for that. Thank you, And bro. the team, Spencer and everybody, uh, the Brown Boys and everybody behind the collective yep. of Brother Smack. 
Um, it was it was really dope to see you guys back live in action. And I know you've been doing Fight Club, and you've been working on you've been helping and throwing assist to a lot of beautiful artists and putting out their projects and getting it ready. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. There's like like um, we've been working with uh, like I said the homegirl Chris Soul and uh, the homeboy Anthony Lynn from mm -hmm. Long Beach. Uh, this girl named Janessa, uh, she's out of Corona, but she's a cool singer, uh, friend of ours. We made a little single with her that's pretty dope. Um, was it, honestly, we've just been working on the album, too. Like I said, we were, we were yeah. trying, to, trying to get it done and wrapped up and just been playing gigs and shit. Like, um, the, 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 for like the past month and a half or so, randomly, that Selena gig has been like pretty, we've been going pretty in, bro. No, that's dope. And, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and it's crazy. To, it's funny that I'll always laugh at, and, and with respect, at, the legacy that Selena left for not just the Latin community, but for the world, because she has it, she, rest in peace, but obviously no new music has been put out since she died, obviously. Yeah. And, but her music is, has transcended to the point where like, I've seen many Selena cover bands and I've seen Selena nights at clubs and shit. And like her, for her having a small body of work in the spectrum of, of uh, music, like, it's crazy how it still resonates and it still attracts people. You yeah. know what I mean? To the point where, like, you're doing sold-out events for for Selena cover nights. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. But yeah. I'm going to pull up to the Saturday one for sure. Oh, yeah, sure. there's one on Saturday, yep. But uh, it's just, I mean, you know, it's like uh, any other gigging musician type stuff. Uh, I'm I'm super thankful to be on that gig. Uh, the homie Brian and Chris O got me on it. But, uh, yeah, man, it's... You know, it's it's a trip, man. It's it's a trip to see that. Like, I did a Red Hot Chili Peppers gig one time at La, at La Santa, okay. uh, coincidentally, where we're gonna be this Saturday. Yeah. And uh, it was fucking packed out, bro. I never seen La Santa that packed out. Even when we went For to a go, Chili Peppers night. Even when we went to go watch like some fame, like some more famous acts and shit, mm. it was packed out. But I, I remember like this one was like lying out the door and it was packed out and. Um, uh, you you were doing chili pepper covers? Chili pepper covers, you know? <laughs> who and, who who was how did that come about? Uh a, a homegirl of ours booked us for that that show and we were opening up for a strokes cover band. Okay. Yeah. No, no. They were opening up for us and then we okay. were closing out the night, right? For sure. And and um yeah, bro. So many fucking people pulled up. It was so loud. They knew all the songs. It was the funniest shit, bro. Yeah, yeah that's we got we got paid well, and then I left the I left the gig, and I was driving home, and I just had this feeling of emptiness, like <laughs> none of that none of that was for me, like you know, <laughs> none of that was for me. Nobody oh, nobody loves Eliza. Everybody loves Red Hot Chili, Chili Peppers. Peppers. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, that's yeah, so yeah, good. Yeah. That's so good. <laughs> that's funny as fuck. Um, but yeah, like it's that's another band where their music will live on forever. It's just undeniable. I personally, I mean, there's just, there's, it's crazy to think that there's bands that are so great. There's artists that are so great that they generate a lot of revenue for other people off yeah. of their catalogs, which is crazy. You What's know up what I mean? with Anthony Kiedis getting away with mumble rap though on tracks? Like he, they, oh, he's not even saying words. Humble, 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 yeah. Yeah. That fool's <laughs> legitimately got away with not saying words at times, like real words. <laughs> It's on one on one. It worked for him. That's hilarious. <laughs> shout out yeah. Kitas. Shout out the Chili Peppers though. Um, but uh, yeah, so so uh, you've Same been with doing Brandon Boyd. Brandon Boyd Incubus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Remember that one he goes. What's he <laughs> worst? my ego up. I know can each other. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. That's hilarious. Um. But yeah, so you've been you've been the gigs are back. I mean, fuck, dude, it's crazy to it's crazy to think about when we when you first did the interview with Brother Smack a year ago, that we were talking about like we don't know when shows are gonna come back, and now we're living in that time. Oh the yeah, shows have been back, and they've been bigger than ever, and people have been showing showing out for them. People it's have been fucking showing out. It's a beautiful thing. Out. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah. Hey, first first Friday of next month, uh, in August, Fight Club again. Yeah. Yeah, y'all. Wherever y'all should pull it, up. Um, Everybody we'll, pull up. It's yeah, be a fucking we'll, crazy. Well, time. definitely, I'm all about to that. But in the situation with that is, have you been playing stuff off the new album at at these live events? Uh, I have. I yeah. have the la the last Fight Club. I, I just did only the the, the new album. And, Hell uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely uh trying to stay away from the old shit. I just want a new new chapter of stuff. Yeah, I feel yeah. like I feel like this music is just on another level too. So it doesn't even really make sense to tap back into the old stuff. It's not even the same like 
vibe or yeah. energy. You feel me? So let's get into it. The new project though, yeah, it hasn't been released. Is it? Do you have a title for it yet? A uh, big moves. Big moves. Big yeah, moves. yeah, that's yeah. that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And I got the privilege of listening to it a while back. I've been bumping it more and more leading up to this interview, and it has a very good. Uh, you got a good pulse on, uh, like modern day. R and B and funk and so you, you you go back to rapping on it too. You know what yeah, I mean. Yeah. So it's cool to see uh, that like that that energy you're putting out because I can only imagine uh, you know after Summer Smackdown when you start doing more and more shows like more people are gonna listen to this and just have fun with yeah. it. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. And and uh, people are like, oh man, this is perfect for the summer, right? It's time for the sub. But I'm like, I don't give a fuck what time this shit comes yeah. out. Like, I feel like people are just gonna vibe with it. Like, I always be thinking about making music that you could like drive at night to, or like smoke to, or fuck to, or like some shit like that. Yeah, like, those are three, those are, those are three of... good vibes right there. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Smoking to, fucking to, driving at night. Like, yeah. those are some good vibes, man. Yeah, man. Smoking in the rain. You're not. You're not lying. You're not lying. Those are all. Great human activities they to partake playing with, in. Playing with puppies, playing with puppy vibes. That's sick. Hell yeah! I want my music to make people feel like they're playing with puppies. <laughs> Ooh, or you like, heard it. or I want, or like, I wanted to feel like the third time that a girl tries anal, like <laughs> it's, they're already used to it, and the third time or second time, then it's really hitting. That's when it's really hitting. Oh damn, son! <laughs> he knows. <laughs> Dude, I'm I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a fan. <laughs> I'll I'll, yeah, I'll I'll eat dude. that I'll eat the ass, but partaking in it like giving it to the girl in there is like it's not for me. I'll eat the ass all day though. We'll edit this part out possibly. La but we gotta leave it in. <laughs> we'll, we gotta leave it in. Hey, we'll I, leave it in. I never eaten ass. I love eating ass. I never eaten ass. But it's gotta be with the girl that I truly respect from head to toe. <laughs> yeah, literally. And then the and and in their heart too. That's the heart <laughs> chakra. They don't tell you that that no, the, that's girl, not, the, the anal, girl the, the anal, girl's anal. heart heart chakra is in the butthole. So when you tongue it, you get close to God. <laughs> Anyways, the new project. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, dude, the Ottoman Empire talked about it. Mesopotamia. That's you know, fucking crazy, Do man. the math. Learn your history. I got go, I to go ahead on that, man. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But only do it respectfully. One, we're big on on uh, consensuality and respecting females out here. All day. Of course. All day. Um, but with that being said, the new project. Uh, you don't have a release date, so we won't talk about that. It'll come out. It's come. It's on the way, though. It's on the fucking way. And then uh, you've been, you've been. Uh, obviously, we just talked about it, but you've been helping more and more people. You got a. Uh, you said you were helping. Um, what's the, what's the lady's name? The young lady's name? Uh, uh, Crisol. Crisol. Mm -hmm. With with her upcoming project. Yeah, Brown Boys. Brown Boys. Brown so Brown Boys. Boys yeah. So everything. Yeah, everything that is like production wise and stuff is it's all Brown Boys. And actually, that's. That's probably the next uh, main project that we'll be like focusing our energy into is uh, the Brown Boys project. Oh hell yeah! Yeah yeah. So that's that's you know the the Liza project is done now, and I think like uh, it's you know time to make like a a full Brown Boys like album or something mm -hmm. like project. You know what I mean? That'll be dope. That'll yeah. be dope. And Brian will be singing on a lot of that. Brian Gazzo, yeah, uh, fucking insane vocalist, uh, insane butt ox. <laughs> <laughs> uh, insane, uh, cute. Lips. How, how how did you uh, how did you link up with the Brown Boys? Did you guys all know each other from Roxanne's or jamming or? I think Brian. I met him. I feel like the first time I met Brian was at Roxanne's. Um, but Roxanne's in Long Beach. In it's Long a legendary Beach. bar where people just can if you're if yeah, you got and jam. if you got the juice you can jam. Yeah, you know? on, on Mondays it was on it was on, I don't I mean I don't know how it's going right now because of the pandemic but. They definitely, you know, it, it's been religiously like every Monday for years, you know, mm. and uh, yeah, people just pull up and jam. And um, back in the day, I know that it used to be pop, and people used to come up. Like I heard that one time, a uh, hiatus coyote pulled up and did a yep. set there randomly, you know. I've seen a lot of the guys from RX Bandits, um, my homie Eric and Prada, who's, in my opinion, one of the most, if not the most, phenomenal drummer right now. Even Travis Barker gave him props one time. Oh shit! I've seen him jam there. Obviously Kelsey and and those guys. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I remember pulling up there a couple times and just being uh, really uh, impressed by those type of situations. Not just Rock Sands, but there's a, there's there's a lot of spots like that uh, out there in Long Beach. Like those type of situations, and in LA too. That's I think what breeds all these sick ass musicians out here is that there is so many of those type of places available. Mm -hmm. So there's so many different circles where people are like 
motivating each other to get better because yeah. you know what i mean and i noticed and i noticed that a lot of my artist homies that do music uh they're not really adamant about being big on social media so that's like sessions like that like bars that have uh uh jam sessions are like their way of networking you know what i mean and they that's how they they get things done where they're like they meet other dope musicians and then they'll put out a, a sh next thing you know each person's band is playing a show in a couple weeks after they, yeah. they meet each other you yeah, know exactly so exactly. it's cool it's cool to see that still being a form of of networking yeah you know? man and you know i can't wait just on, on that album because we're talking about the shows like I, I really can't wait to start playing this shit more because i'm, I'm starting to see the response like people don't even know like we haven't even had no music out or even with the brown boys like we haven't had no music out but i feel like we're we're already doing pretty solid about doing some good shows and mm. uh having some good like crowd control and uh stuff like that and i i think uh once the music comes out i just can't wait for more people to for just to be available so because i haven't even been sharing this shit on mm. fucking uh like, I haven't, you know, I haven't been really leaking shit or, like, posting clips of the songs or nothing, you know? Mm -hmm. I've been, uh, I've always been trying to be pretty good about, like, sharing stuff on social media without sharing stuff, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, staying consistent and... Yeah, you, you'll post yourself in the studio, like, but no one knows what you're clearly working on. It's yeah, just, you're, yeah, you're yeah. Just, you know... Or, like, one-minute slappers with the boys. Like exactly. Like, me, me, me and the boys have this thing called, uh, I think Blue Tory started it. It's called uh, One Minute Slappers. And we just make like songs for one minute or we'll do like flips for one minute or whatever. Hell yeah. So that's like a good way of us like getting content out there that shows that we're like developing as artists, but like without us having to like give away the booty mm -hmm. and fucking, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, I know exactly what yeah, you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People get too horny, bro. People <laughs> get too horny. There's, we live, and social media has made it so easy to be so horny uh, physically and also like <laughs> metaphorically. Where, I like, know exactly what you mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah like they, they. It's hard, like, the, the element of surprise is, like, pretty gone in a lot of people. Yeah, you know of I course, mean? of course. There's some artists that are great at it. There's some artists that go the full length and they'll just not be on social media at all until they post something, but, yeah, and, you know. Yeah, and it is, we are living in a, in a very strange time where you can become fried on so much content being dropped out. Like, it's crazy to me that there used to be, I remember when we were growing up, we, like, a CD would last us for a couple years, someone's album, you know what I mean? And now an album drops and then literally on Friday there's like another one. Another one. Yeah. And it's just Or like there's like a new music video that everyone's fucking with or something and like I think the, the, the projects that really last is like um people like the fans really keep them alive because they keep going back to them. Yep. You feel me? Mm -hmm. The fans really do keep it alive because it's something that they just really relate to, you know what I mean? It is it is we are living in some strange times, but I I, I like it. I like the way People choose to maneuver through social media, not in all aspects, but, um, you know, with with streaming services and all that. Like, it is cool to constantly be entertained by new music and new content, even though at times it feels like, Jesus Christ, man, my brain is fried from all this shit, dog. Yeah, also, you know what I mean? sometimes I feel like I'm sure we all we all are either guilty of this or not guilty of this. But, like, you know, I think. It's weird having so many people on social media, Some sometimes people that you may not know 100%, and they're just acquaintances, and then when you run into them at a show or at an event, like, um, number one, I'm really bad with facial recognition, so I already don't. Sometimes I'll be meeting someone, and they'll just be like, hey, it's me, dude. <laughs> like, you know, and I'm like, hey, you know? Yeah. I don't know who you are, you know? Um, and and uh, there we have so many, like, acquaintances on this shit that like or people that we see every day on social media that when we see them in person barely do we like say anything or talk to them or yeah, say what's it's, up it's, like, it is pretty you know? weird but again i always make sure that i know that that i know who they are like i'm i'm i'm, I'm tired of that weirdness going Not back to what we we're sure. talking about where it's just like i know who you are dog and i'm gonna make let it be known that i know who you are you know you're and whether early. you're uncomfortable by it but What's the point of me following you on social media because I, I think you make me laugh or you do dope art or you take cool pictures or you make cool music. It's like, I'm going to give you your goddamn me, props, boy. Me and Spencer or girl. were saying earlier, I think you're really good at that, bro, because you're, I would say you're probably, aside from my homie Willie, my, my homie, and actually this for two Spencer, like mm. the three of y'all kind of have that in common where you guys are just tapped into like so many different circles of people that 
all accept you so hard that yeah. that rock with, rock with you guys so hard. I feel like you guys are like chameleons. Like you, you're here one day with this group, the next day with this group, and and you guys are just like have the power to bring them all together too. It's pretty dope. You know, I like I mean? that. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I mean, that's the power of being a socialist, in my opinion. Uh, I get I get to socialize with so many people. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I'm and I believe you're in, a fucking master socializer. This hell motherfucker yeah. is a master. Hell yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's 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 beautiful that shows are coming back and you know the networks are are building again and you guys are doing it on your terms and selling out shows and people are coming out to support it. I, I it's really it's really awesome, man. Because I not for one second after I interviewed you guys last time did I doubt in my mind you guys are going to do cool shit once we were allowed to congregate in, in person. Nah, you know for what sure, I mean? Man. And it's, I feel like it's just the beginning, dude. Like, yeah. uh, I know that's super cliche, but it is just the beginning. And, uh, I mean, dude, I, don't, I haven't even dropped this album yet. Like, I feel like this is my first album, even though I do have another project, but I was so young and I was also involved with people that they had their hands on this project. So and it never felt like it was my project a hundred percent. And, I feel like this is a project that I do feel like this is what it sounds like when you just let us do our thing, like without you, anybody else interfering. You feel me? Oh yeah. And uh, that's why it sounds so fucking dumb. And uh, I'm, you know, I used to be so insecure about bumping my shit before too, but I think I fuck with this shit so much because um, I don't. When I hear it, I don't think I just hear me. I also hear uh, Brian and I also hear Blue and all the I, homies. I also hear yeah the the homies that played on it. You know I have Ray Khalil on it. That's, yeah. that's the homegirl. Uh, and I fucking have uh, the homie Leota on it. Kennedy Mash and uh, the homie Lynn and Marcus the whole Paul. collective. Yeah, all yeah. the homies, all the homies. So it's just like I, I feel like that's why I get so excited when I hear it because it's like damn, like it's not just me no more. Like. Oh, or it's not some fucking weird ass old fools that don't understand music. It's like yeah. all the homies, you know yeah. what I mean? It's sick. And uh yeah, man, just I'm I'm glad to be living in a culture of people that are all down to believe in themselves and get it. There are people that be doubting in themselves, but like for the I, I have met a lot of artists that make me happy to see like damn people have in this generation right now, there's a lot of people with that confidence, which yeah. is good. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's good. It's more than before. You feel it me? Is, because yeah. Because people are more aware now that they can do shit themselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the power's in your hands, and that's what I'm saying. It's like, yo, I, I think it's cool that we're living in an era where, going back to what you said, you could do it on in your own terms. It's just about how much work you're willing to put out into this shit, and and make and plan the right moves, and build and have a team that understands how to operate in this vicious cycle at the same time too, where everyone's famous, everyone's big on Instagram, everyone's doing music and all this stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, keep entertaining us, man. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, man. You're and one of a kind. The, we're gonna make a music video for Dombe. Yeah, we got exactly. That, that's executive produced by my boy right here and yeah. Spencer behind the camera. Exactly. It's gonna be a good one. Exactly. So it's done. <laughs> we all here swaying. So yeah, Eliza, everybody, we out. Hey, big C's in the motherfucking building. That's right. Shout out, shout out, Spencer. Am I getting in the pool? Do it up. Are we doing this? Do it up. You getting in the tour or what? I'll get in. Oh my god. There you go. Yeah. It's summertime, baby. <laughs> ah. Let them know. Big moves all summer. Woo. Oh. Hey, you're too rich. Hey. <laughs> Big moves all summer, baby.